Okay, these are the columns that I'm going to be installing in the movie theater in the basement that I'm working on right now where I built a bar and you see me already do the coffered ceiling or the box beam ceiling. So today I want to talk about the finish. A lot of people don't tell you this, uh, and this is from a professional standpoint. Anybody that knows my finishes, uh, that's been a client of mine in the past, knows that I get them a glass smooth finish. I use satin because that's uh, basically it's the customer's choice, but um, I always use satin or recommend satin, sometimes a semi-gloss depending on the atmosphere of where it's going to be in. This is going to be in the movie theater, in the dark, and you want it to not have a lot of reflection. Satin is the perfect sheen for that. You could use dead flat also, but I don't recommend using dead flat because it basically looks like the wood is unfinished. So I use satin and I recommend satin. But with the perfect finish, you definitely want to make sure that you're spraying the finish. Spraying the finish will give you the absolute best finish you can possibly get. You spray three coats and you sand with, I recommend, 400 grit in between. But for the finish itself, when the last coat is on, I'm going to get you a little bit closer in here because I want you to see this. There is a little trick that I use and I actually put it on Instagram one time. Some people like to use um, 1500 to 2000 grit wet dry sandpaper for the sanding of the final third coat of the, or sometimes the fourth coat of the sprayed finish. So what I like to do instead of using the uh, 2000 grit is actually just take a paper bag, which is the equivalent of 2000 grit sandpaper. And if you don't believe me, we're going to get a little bit closer in there right now. And I'm going to show you how this little piece of paper bag that's ripped off from an actual lunch bag can actually powder up the finish and get that glass smooth look that you want. And the feel of not only the actual real wood itself feeling, but at the same time, it's an absolute nib free. And when I say nib, I mean little pieces of dust or little pieces of hair that might've gotten caught in the finish when it was drying and glass smooth where you can't get a splinter from it and actually feel the wood grain and the actual finish itself over the wood grain. So this way it still has that real feel and not that plasticky fake um, polycrylic type of a finish. Let's get a little bit closer in here. I'll, I'll show you uh, what this finish looks like. I'll show you the sheen of it and I will show you this paper bag as your final sanding. Okay, so I have the camera off the tripod because I want to walk you over here to show you the satin finish sheen that's sprayed on here. You see how there's not a lot of reflection? It has that just slight sheen that reflects a little bit of the light but it's very subtle. Okay, and you can see here from the side, I'll just bring it in a little closer here. These are heavy lights shining on there, LEDs. And even with the LEDs, you don't get that bad reflection where it would blind you and mess everything up for the actual picture that you're watching. But you can see here that I've done these already and they are glass smooth. So now I'm just going to show you with the paper bag really quick how to just lightly go over these so that you get the perfect finish every time. Okay, so you sprayed three coats of your finish. In between each one of the coats, uh, hopefully you sanded with 400 grit sandpaper. And now the final coat has dried and it's been sitting for 24 hours. So now we're going to take our secret weapon, which is this paper bag. And we're just going to go over this the same way you would in between coats where you're sanding it down. So you're just going to take the weight of your hand, the light passes, and you're just going to go with the grain for the most part. You really don't have to go with the grain in all the areas because the finish is three layers thick and you're not going to scratch across the grain. And since this is such a fine um, imitation of uh, high grit sandpaper, you have no risk of scratching the finish or the grain itself. So in areas like this, where it's underneath, you can actually get that paper in there and either you can go up to the grain like this and you can follow along with the grain or you can even just go across like this and you can see there are no scratches or anything like that. But as you go through this with this, you can see little pieces of dust. Hopefully the camera's picking it up because this is so dark here, but uh, there's actual powdering up of the finish. And this is, like I said, this is just a paper bag. So if you don't think that you can get the best results with using a paper bag, go ahead and give it a try and let me know how it worked out for you. I'll try to get as close as I can here. It might not pick it up, 
but you can see because these lights are very heavy there's a lot of wash out but there is powder on my hands and there's some powder residue left now on the actual finish itself as you can see through from the dark so you can just wipe that off you could use a little bit of denatured alcohol lightly on a rag wipe it off but i like to just take a compressor blow it off and get all the powder off of it or take a vacuum and you can actually use the soft bristle brush with your vacuum to vacuum up all that dust before you go and install it in the client's home. Okay, so if you guys had any questions about the finish itself on what I used, I used General Finishes High Performance Satin. I'll put a link to that in the description. I sprayed it with a HVLP spray gun. This is the Fuji Semi Pro 2 unit, HVLP, uh, high volume, low pressure. This unit right here, and the air hose hooks up right there. You have filters on the side, and basically, what that does is it pumps a high volume of air through the gun, puts out a low amount of pressure through the tip and sprays into a very fine mist for the finish. And what that does is it lets the finish atomize really quick. And then of course, 400 grit in between each one of those coats. Uh, with that waterborne system, I recommend at least an hour drying time in between. The finish dries really fast to the touch. It's dry within a half an hour to 40 minutes, but give it a light sanding at about an hour and then you're ready to recoat. Just make sure that you check it with your nail to see if it's tacky. You can actually hit your nail on the finish like that and if it sticks a little bit, it's not ready yet. You can you know wait a little bit longer. So uh, after that, the third coat goes on when it's Finish completely and dry. I usually wait 24 hours before I start to handle it and sand it with the paper bag that makes it that glass smooth finish. Once again, um, this is a gravity fed gun for the HVLP Semi Pro 2 on Fuji. I'll link this and I will link the finish uh, from General Finishes in the description as well. I hope you guys like this video and I hope it helps you guys with your finishes. Definitely give it a try. And um, if you don't think that it's something that's gonna work for you, make sure you test it out on a scrap piece of wood first. Put a couple of coats of the finish on there, let it dry, sanding in between obviously, and then when it's fully dry, hit it with a paper bag and see how it comes out. I've been doing this for at least 10 years with all my finishes. I used to use a finer grit sandpaper. Once I started using the paper bag, I actually got better results because there was uh, less of a heavy powder and the risk of burning through that finish. Even though uh, 2000 grit is very fine, sometimes it could take a little bit of that finish off if you press too hard. The paper bag doesn't do that. All right guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit that picture of a notification bell, and if you like the videos, what you see, give it a thumbs up right here, and definitely come back for more. I have a lot more videos in store. So I will see you guys next time in the shop and also out in the field. Thanks for joining me.